All right, thank you so much, Brooke. And look who we have here, everybody. Senator Tester, live in our studio. Thank you so much, Senator, for getting up early with our viewers. It's great to be with you. And, uh, you know, get up this last week and it's warm outside. Get up this week and uh, here it's you are, cold outside. Here you are in a Montana winter. Right on. We well, gotta uh, love it. Yeah, I want to start with the debt right now. I looked it up this morning. Um, one report says that our national debt is now at $33.68 trillion. Yep. Along with this, I read a report that says our interest payments on the debt yeah. now are higher than the full Department of Defense operations. Um, a report listed our interest payments at 808 or so billion dollars in the fiscal year up till August. And I know this has to play a part in the um, funding talks, possible shutdown talks um, that have a deadline by November 17th. It, it certainly is. Uh, it certainly is going to play a role in all that. I can tell you that a shutdown would not reduce the debt. It would increase the debt. A shutdown would uh, put our military at a big disadvantage, put put our businesses at a disadvantage, and, and certainly our service people who are serving at, at a big disadvantage. So I, I don't think that's a smart move to do. I do think that we need to start having a serious conversation because we haven't had one for, well, since 2000 probably on the debt and where we need to go and what we need to fund and what we need not to fund. Um, it would be a difficult conversation. We had Simpson Bowles. Uh, study that came out oh, t 10, 12 years ago, and they made some recommendation, and Congress, uh, in a bipartisan way, foo fooed those and didn't accept any of them. Um, but I do think that we need to sit down and start talking about what's really important in this country. You know, when, when there was a transition at the Fed here a few years back, I asked Bernanke, I said, what's, what's the deal with, with the debt? How do you think about how this rolls? He said, well, it's a serious thing, but you've got to have an economy that helps move forward, otherwise you're never going to get that debt paid off. And so when it comes to making sure that we have, for instance, tech jobs in Montana or a vibrant farming community and production agriculture or a good environment for Main Street businesses by investing in things like infrastructure and education and workforce training and childcare and housing, all that stuff uh, makes a big difference. And so there's plenty of things that we need to invest in. And, and quite frankly, the federal government can't do it all. It has to be done with a partnership with the state and with the private sector. And I think that if, if we're able to get those kind of things done, we can solve things that are big issues, like housing right now is a big issue in the state of Montana, big issue all over the country. Child care, if we're going to get people back to work, we've got to have safe, affordable child care. Otherwise, people can make more money staying at home and when they really want to go back to work. Uh, and the same thing with infrastructure. We had, hadn't invested in infrastructure in since the Eisenhower administration to speak of and uh, to be able to get broadband to everybody's house to make sure we get good roads and bridges. All that stuff's really important. So these are tough decisions to make on the debt and deficit, but I think they're conversations we need to have. But shutting the government down, not a good idea. Um, I certainly hope, it, uh, hope cooler minds prevail here because quite honestly at a time when we've got wars in Israel and Ukraine and we've got Xi Jinping doing things in the Pacific that aren't really very helpful, uh, the last thing we need is a government shutdown. Let's talk more about Israel. We just had an announcement this morning that more troops are going in even um, to fight uh, Iranian forces in Syria and whatnot. Yeah, so the, the American forces, and I haven't been briefed in a classified session on this, but, but what I've been told is the American forces that are going in are for training purposes um, uh, in the Middle East. Okay. Uh, they were not specific on where they were going, whether they were going into Israel or somewhere else. Um, and, and I think it's important that uh, our allies do have the best information. We have the best military in the world. And so give them the best information so that they can be successful in what they're doing and minimize civilian deaths. Will this affect help to Ukraine? Uh, this could have impacts on, on Ukraine. Uh, uh, as far as the, the service members did not go into Ukraine, that, that is absolutely off the table. Um, Ukraine is fighting their own war and, and doing an incredible job under tough conditions, fighting, uh, fighting uh, a Putin. Uh, but, but the bottom line is, is that, uh, um, you know, Ukraine's fighting for their democracy. Putin has said he wants to reunite the USSR. I think we ought to take him at his word, and I think we need to uh, support that effort. 
Otherwise, he'll be in Poland and, and in Eastern Europe in a big, big way. I, there's no doubt in my mind about that. And, uh, and then that brings a whole different set of scenario up where we potentially could have service people fighting in Eastern Europe. I need to ask you one more question sure. about this tech hub designation. Yeah. People yeah. are asking me at the gym, yeah. what, is, <laughs> what is this going to bring? Well, it's going to bring, it's going to bring some seed money to, to be able to get business in our university system, our economic developers together. They're really going to be focusing on smart optical sensors, uh, which can be used in everything from military applications to self-driving cars to home security to business security. Um, this is really going to, if, if we're able to get through this round, and they've got $450,000 to help build partnerships, we get through this round, they make it the next round, it's going to be tens of millions of dollars from the private sector and the public sector coming together to be able to create jobs and make Montana a player and a leader in technology in this country. It's about bringing jobs back from China, making sure our supply chains are solid here so we don't have to depend on anybody else and Montana can be a big player in that. We're going to have to do a lot of work over the next six months, but I feel very good about it. We outcompeted 200 other states, almost 200 other states, to make it through the first round because we've got some great people in this state and, uh, and I think we'll, we'll outcompete the next round, but it's going to take a lot of work. Well, Senator, I need to leave it at that, but thank you so much thank you. for coming in and speaking to our viewers. Absolutely. So great to have you. Always a pleasure. All right.